Hey everybody, time for an unboxing video. Um, I was on Amazon just getting some supplies the other day and I saw this thing in like, you know, checkout. They show you stuff that they think you might want to impulse purchase and it turned out to be interesting and so I impulse purchased. All right, so what we got First of all, let me say, okay, in order to keep my guitar acquis acquisition syndrome under control to at least some degree, yeah, I know, 70 and counting, folks, but here's the rule, one of each type. I've broken the rule in a couple places. I got, like, I got groat in all three flavors, colors. It's a hollow body, what can I say? Um... I got like two or three, maybe even four ES-355s, but hey, that's a guitar I I learned on, so, or a clone thereof. So I suppose that's an excuse. Other than that, I've really got like literally one of each, except for I've got like two five-string basses. One's a... In a rough shape, but my original Fender Jazz five string from back in the late 90s, and the other one's a late model low dollar baseline unit, like a glary kind of a thing. Nothing wrong with it, it's still a nice five string bass, but it's not, it's not the Fender. I mean, I paid like eight back in the day for that Fender, probably. This thing was only like two, and I've got um. Some place where, ah, right there. The styrofoam on the bottom. That's a, uh, uh, reproduction of a mid-80s Fender Jazz, no, not Jazz, Fender Special Bass, fourth string. And I've got another fourth string fretted bass up there, too, so that's a duplicate. Other than that, no duplicates. And I've got, like, one of everything. Except for something like this. This is a resonator. I've got a resonator kit. I tried to put it in one of the leftover acoustics, but it wasn't but the acoustic wasn't big enough for the kit. I saw this on Amazon right now, or at least a couple days ago. They were available for under two, under two hundred dollars. It's a uh it's a pile brand. So this is going to be interesting. I've had some pile gear in the past. And it's, I'd give it a so-so rating maybe. Um, it's a pile acoustic resonator guitar. Uh, model number PGA500B. So we're going to see what's up here. I'm going to get the kittens off. They love this bench. So I'll be back. Check this out. It's a guitar shaped styrofoam coffin. I've never seen that before. I mean, I've seen, you know, the same shape as the box triangle kind of thing, but I've never seen this. This is cool. I'm going to have to save that. Wow, this is nice. A little styrofoam coffin. Form fitting and everything. Okay, so what do we got here? Registration card. Um, instruction manual. Uh, looks like some something about getting lessons. Yep. Two months free subscription. Not a bad deal. Okay, we've got a unpadded gig bag. And let me get it out. Okay, and underneath the guitar itself, which I have yet to unzip, we've got a little, some case candy. And a little, a couple little compartments through all that. That's a case candy compartment, and that's where the headstock is. 
So let's see, what do we got? Uh, extra set of strings, nice touch. Uh, ooh, you get a strap, another nice touch, and a tune. Not too bad. Picks, very good. Yeah, I'd say that would about about cover it for this type of guitar. No, uh, no cable. Now this is supposed to be electro acoustic with a built-in like three band EQ and all that kind of stuff. So we'll see. Okay, I'm zipping the gig bag. There's the guitar inside a foam bag. And yeah. It's looking nice, man. It's a resonator. I believe it's a uh, Gibson scale length, as I recall. Have to look that up, but yeah, I think it's a Gibson scale length. So, very cool, very cool. I think I see little curls through there. Yeah, there the camera. Yeah, see little girls through that foam, so yeah, cool. Now, one thing about this, um, it doesn't have an electric guitar pickup at the neck like a lot of resonators usually do. It's only got the piezo, I believe, or mic, or however they do it, so. But, we'll find out. Okay, taking it out of the gig bag, this is what we've got. It's a uh, resonator, it's got, oh yeah, nice old fashioned type tailpiece on it. I like that. Guard over the bridge. Strings are wrapped in paper in order to protect the fretboard, nice touch. And uh, yeah, you got the foam bag and held on with the rubber band. Pretty standard stuff there for packaging. That also was held on by the rubber band. It was sitting right back in there. So yeah, that would be a wrench for something. Not quite sure what to tell you the truth. I guess we'll find out, huh? Okay, got it out of the foam bag and set it up on the bench. And let's see what we got here. So we've got like, I believe this one's called Sunset Burst, or Tobacco Burst, however you want to refer to it. Little screens for the resonators. A oh, big old cone resonator here. It looks to be a, yeah, it's a single cone type. And uh, up here, doesn't say pile on the headstock, thank God. Headstock's looking. Good enough. It's got just a little P inside the logo there, that's all. Um, yeah, there you can see. So, let's see. We've got some baseline tuners. We've got a... We've got a wound third string. Let's see what the strings themselves. Uh, yeah, let me get this paper off. Paper's off, and she's looking pretty, man. Looking pretty. Oh, my God. Yeah, looking real pretty. Look at this. Can you believe this? Under 200 bucks, man. Can't beat that. Oh, yeah. Can't beat that. Look at this finish, man. Look at that. Can't beat this with a stick. Can't beat this with a stick. Oh, my God. Look, 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 look. Hold on. There it is. Come on, camera. Focus. Triple bound on the body. I'm liking it. Okay, here, look. Let me do this right quick. For the players out there who just want to know what's up, right? Right quick. Uh, you can look up. I'm pretty sure this is a Gibson scale length. This is, what, this is what's important. You want to know what the frets feel like. And they're not bad. They're a little rough. Not bad for a low end. Well, they're not great. I give them a C minus kind of a thing. Um, the other thing you want to know is, yeah, see, no pickup. We've got three little holes here and two screen ports here, and then a single cone resonator. 
Uh, the neck, it's a, uh, it's an acoustic style neck. You know, feels just like an acoustic style neck. It's not fat or anything like that. I could play this kind of thing all day long. If you've ever played an acoustic, yeah. It's very, very fine. There's no problem with that at all. Tuners, bass line gets the job done. Like I said, we're looking at number four wound. String gauge is uh, probably tens or nines. You can look it up, see what they put on it. Um, initial setup out of the box. Action is high. Uh, intonation. Doesn't sound bad. Do you have any adjustment? And that would be a no. So, what you get is what you get. Um, yeah, so this is a biscuit type bridge, it looks to be. And you've... If I've got my terminology right there. Yeah, so the strings actually ride on a bridge, which rides on a spider, which goes out to the edges of the cone, and that's how it vibrates the cone. Is, that's how the mechanism works, as I recall. So, um... Okay, so, yeah. Comes out of the box. Action's a little on the high side. Actually, it's rather sloped in that direction it's um eh, it's yeah it's high it's high and uh I'll check the tuning in order to figure out where these streaks they feel almost a little tight for Gibson have to see what's up with that but, yeah, so, okay, there's the basic nitty-gritty, the frets are fair, yeah, the frets are not that, not that impressive, as far as, like, the fret ends go, this thing definitely needs some attention, especially at the top end, they're feeling rough, um, beautiful fretboard and stuff, I mean, the guitar itself seems to be quite beautiful, um, and I'm sure once it's tuned up, that it won't, you know, that it will sound okay and stuff like that. With a little cap on the heel, that's a nice touch. Yeah, this is looking real, real pretty. Let's see what we got here. Uh, some kind of a phone stamp thingy. And a QC sticker. All the normal things. But yeah, 200 bucks. I'm saying. I'm saying, I'm happy, I'm happy, and in case you didn't know, I'm like, this is not a monetized channel, uh, I don't, I'm not sponsored by anybody by any ways or means, you know, I'm, I'm approaching like 50 subscribers, this is basically, this channel is for me to document my builds, and uh, occasionally if I get something in, I'll do a review on it, like this. So, okay, that's the, uh, that's the basic information for the players out there. Now I'm going to take a little bit more of a deep dive for the builders, and we'll see everything we can figure out about this thing. I'm not sure there's that much to figure out, to tell you the truth, so I'll be back. Okay, let's uh, take a little closer look at this thing. Now, I'm not going to break bad with, you know, feeler gauges and micrometers and stuff. The precise numbers are not really that important. You know, how, how much too high the action is versus what you think is right is, is not that critical. I mean, we can all just see that that's like, wow, man, am I doing slide here and laptop, you know, lap, lap black guitar or what so 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 yeah so let's take a look let's see what we got here okay now starting up the headstock silver tuners non-locking mm, 
about the normal amount of slop in them. Uh, not high ratio. I I like the logo because of the fact that it's understated. Yeah. It'll work. It'll work. It's not, you know, the best in the world, but it's not like an eyesore, so. Headstock shape overall, tasteful. Now, for finish, it looks like they went with a natural for the whole back of the neck. And then they did a black, kind of a gloss black actually, um, paint for the front of the neck. And then it's been single bound. And the single binding continues down the side of the neck. A little joint right there. And it's all bound in a light cream compared to the to the white the bone white colored nut, which is of course plastic. And yeah, fully brown. Even the end. Very nice, very a nice touch. Yeah. This thing is the as far as like the looks and the finish that goes, this is a straight up extremely classic example. This is this is nice. Yeah. We're single bound on the back of the body. The entire body, I believe, I, I get, I'd have to look up what this wood is. They're decent woods, though. I did check out, like, you know, the description and some reviews and stuff before I took the plunge. And it's a, it's a real guitar. And, yeah, it's it's got some decent reviews so okay now um so moving on now what do we got we got some kind of a fretboard it looks awfully light to be it's not rosewood it's something like walnut or something inside. i don't know i just pull up the specs and that brings us down to like the part of the guitar that confuses me, and that is these three holes here. Unfinished, no screens, no nothing. You know, I mean, it's like, I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand why they're there. Unless there's like another version that has a pickup mounted to it through those or something. But So, yeah, these are just sound holes here with little screen covers on them. Um, let's see, the nut. Yeah, that's a good question. And this is actually something that the player should know too, is what our nut action is, and our nut action is, is non-existent. So this is a very, very well cut nut. Of course, unless it's too low and it buzzes, which I'm sure it's not gonna do. So, yeah, they all ring out, so not an issue. Yeah, great nut, great nut. Nice and low, no strings buried down in the grooves or anything. So, yeah, well done there, well done there. Frets are rough, man. By any, by any standard for your, you know, $70 on the $200, let's say, guitar, this is on the rough side, these fret ends. Um, obviously, it's got basically classical style guitar frets. Real dinky, real dinky. Yeah, but it's okay. It makes you a better player. It makes you a better player. So, yeah. Um, I actually... I started on an ES-355 clone, and then I had some six-string acoustics in my life, including something that didn't have the classical headstock, but had the classical kind of design on it. And then, uh, and then I finally broke bad and ended up with my, my Fender 12-string. 
from the Fender 12 experimental build thing. And, uh, and that, once again, was a 12 string acoustic that I had him put a pickup in. And then, and then I stepped up my ESP LTD M, M2, and it was all over, man. It was all over. I finally got my hands on a real frickin' guitar. And, yeah. I, I got so many guitars, but the M2 is still my number one axe. Even after all these years. And I've had that thing for, Jesus, uh. 30 years, 35 years, something like that now, so. But anyway, um, about this thing, let's see, what else is there to cover? I mean, we, we've we gone over the, the fit, the fit and finish on all this is just, you know, I have yet to find a flaw. Well, wait, I spoke too soon. Is that a flaw? That might be a flaw. Oh, we have a flaw. I don't believe it. We have a flaw. Okay, well, there you go. For all you obsessive, compulsive, you know, types who are all about, oh, I've got a flaw on this and I've got a flaw on that. It's like, dude, come on. Pictures are for looking at. Guitars are for playing, man. This thing's fucking nice. Pardon my French. Pardon my French, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, for all of you, you know, I buy a guitar as much for the looks as for playing. I could mention a couple channels that come to mind for folks, but, you know, everybody's got their, their thing that they're about. But, yeah, there's a little flaw. So, there you go. One little flaw. And that'll probably sand right out. <laughs> so, yeah. You can sand that right out. And just take a little clear cut on your finger and it's gone. Come in with like, um, hmm, 2000 probably be a little on the fine side. You might have to go down all the way to around somewhere around four to 600, something in that range in order to cut it without making an all day chore or burning through an entire sheet just to do that little spot. So, well, when I post this, y'all help me out and tell me what these holes are for. Other than that, I don't know. Do I need to tune it up and plug it in and stuff like that? I probably don't even really. I mean, it's like, as you can hear, it's... really does come from the cone. I suppose I should do it some justice and play it a little bit. This is probably coming through the phone acoustically. It's pretty darn loud for an acoustic. So, yeah. All right. Let me find a tuner. Alright. Figured out what the deal is with these strings. They're bronze wound steel acoustic guitar strings, not electric guitar strings. And that's why it's got like it's got wound number three and numbers three through six are all like bronze wound instead of like steel wound or whatever nickel wound so uh yeah that's what's going on it's got it's got acoustic steel guitar strings on it not electric guitar strings which kind of makes sense because i mean the thing is technically not an electric guitar it's it's an electrified guitar but it's not electric with a pickup and stuff like that so it's it's the except for this part here this part here is the technology the guitar amplif amplification technology that more or less immediately preceded the electromagnetic pickup because you got your first electromagnetic pickups around what 35 or so 
maybe a couple years after that. And these things came just before that. In like you know the 1900s, 1920s kind of thing, but but then were superseded by the, by the electric pickup. It's uh there's some stuff on online on YouTube and stuff about the history of like Dobros and 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 stuff like that. It's it's interesting stuff. You should check it out. Yeah, you know how it is. Guitar history can be very interesting for aficionados. So. Yeah, I'd I'd recommend you do a YouTube search on that. I found a couple good videos on like the history of Dobros and things or resonators. Dobros a brand, I believe. Uh, the same as Tricone. Tricone is also a brand or a trademark or something. This is not a Tricone. This is a this is a spider cone type. You can actually, you know, there's a spider bar right there. And there's a spider bar right there. I'd take it apart, but I don't want to take it apart. It's a nice guitar. I mean, yeah, this is this. I mean, yeah, this is a nice guitar. Could fit and finish. This is really, I got to tell you, well, okay. The fretboard looks, I don't know, maybe it'll look better with oil, but it looks kind of, I don't know, cheap. There's not a lot of, like, highly evident graining in it. And there's a fair amount of modeling. Mottling. It could almost be... I mean... Technically, yeah, there is graining and stuff, but it mixes in with the string so much. I should hit it with some oil. I should pull up the specs on this, too. Um, let me, uh, give me a minute. I'll be right back. And there's a couple more things that I was thinking need to check out before actually tuning it up and seeing what it sounds like. One of which is the electronics on it because I haven't really even looked at them yet. I just kind of, you know, said, hey, standard electroacoustic electronics, get a little thing, a little thing, and yeah. So, and I'm sure that's what it's going to be, but there was something else. What was it? That's a pretty cone down in there, isn't it? If you can see down in there, yeah, see some cone down in there. Yeah, all nice shiny spun aluminum stuff. I gotta tell you, yeah, it's, it's a really pretty guitar. This is definitely one that looks every bit as good as in the photos online. Even probably the fretboard. I should put some oil on that thing. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, let's take a look at this preamp unit here. What do we got? We've got bass, mid, and treble EQ sliders with center detents, which is nice. And so we've got three offset sliders. We've got two, like, indicators for boost and cut. Unfortunately, the zeros on the indicators do not coincide with the center detents of any of the three sliders. <laughs> hey, it's representative, right? Sorry about the focus here, folks. Um, and then we've got a battery check light. We've got an on-off button. It might do more, like, you know, press and hold for battery check or something like that. Got to read the RTFM, right? And then we've got a volume knob with, like, no on-off click or anything like that. And then a spot to put a battery, and I'll have to fish up a battery. We'll find out whether it's junk, whether it's okay, or whether it's, oh my god, that's incredible, when I do a sound check test thing, which I'm going to have to do, I guess. 
so, um, yeah, let me, uh, let me pull up the specs on this thing, just to let you know what's up, I mean, it's like, you know, look at this, this is some pretty wood, isn't it, so, yeah, the woods on this thing, as I recall, were decent, at the, at the very least, you know, like, mahogany body, and spruce top, and, Walnut fretboard maybe or something like that. So let me pull that up and uh, Then I'll fish up a battery and we'll do a sound check and uh, That will about cover. Uh oh check this out and wait a minute for shipping If you look right come on camera If you look right yeah, there you can see it, I think. This is bowed down a little bit. Looks like it's been dented a bit. I'll have to give that a little push back up. It might actually be touching some strings or something. Almost. So, all right. Let me uh, get to all that. I'll be back. I shall return. Oh, wait, hold on. I'll be back is from... Terminator, and I shall return as uh, MacArthur, World War II, so, need a new quote. Uh, un momento, por favor. Se habla español, hablo español un poco solamente. Okay, I loosen up the strings, and uh, I put some mineral oil on the, uh, on the fretboard so we can get a better look at just exactly what it looks like here. Um, I also found the docks online from the Pile website. They're selling it for more than Amazon. I mean, yeah, more than Amazon. I don't know if that Amazon was a sale or what. Um, I can look that up too. Okay, so the so, Pyle is saying that this is a walnut fretboard with an Okun neck, apparently. And the uh, front is spruce plywood and the body is mahogany plywood. And so, there you go. And, yeah, this walnut, I mean, it's got some graining to it, but... Not a whole lot, and it's not really all that to say to... I mean, it's not the fact that it's light, even though I don't particularly care for the shade. But, um, because I've got a lot of... I have actually like light rosewood fretboards, but the graining on this is all... It's all just so vertical, so... It is what it is, right? So, there you go. Um, yeah, the the fretboard is, I mean, it's pretty. It's nice wood and stuff and everything like that. It's just, you know, it's not rosewood. So, and, uh, yeah, I need to get a battery into this thing and get it tuned up and we'll see what it sounds like. Uh, let me go over the specs here. Specs, where are the specs? Specs. Yeah, um. Anything I didn't mention. Oh, scale length 24.8 inches. So, that's why Gibson 24.75, 24 three quarters. I was saying it was the Gibson scale length. Um, I already talked about the woods they use. And yeah, it's bron bronze wound steel acoustic steel guitar strings 21 frets so there you go that's that's the basics or everything that we didn't already figure out so let me uh get a battery and a clip on tuner and a guitar pick okay i've got it all tuned up But I think where this thing got pushed down or whatever, it might be touching number five string. So I'm going to put 
put some tape on the pliers so I don't mess up the chrome here and gently pull this thing back away from the strings a little bit. Okay, now it's looking a little better. We've got some space between the strings and this guard here. Um, the pliers and tape trick did not work. I couldn't get a good enough grip on it to pull it up. The stuff is a lot tougher than it looks. So I actually had to loosen up all the strings and lay this bar across it. And then gently pry it up this way. But I was able to do it, and I raised it up, oh, I don't know, a mil, maybe two mil, something like that. You know, a mil long here, and where it was really down low, maybe two mil. Because it was, it was actually touching, like, number five and number four almost, so. Or it sure looked like it was. But anyway, um, yeah, it's got clearance now, so I'll go ahead and uh, tighten it back up. And then, hopefully, sound demo time. Okay, I got it uh, tuned up here. Let's see what it sounds like. The guitar is heavy because of the resonator system in it. Adds a couple pounds to it, definitely. bit of a banjo sound to it, especially on the upper strings. It's definitely louder than a regular acoustic guitar. You can really hear the sound coming out from the speaker, especially on the on the higher pitch strings. Let's uh, plug it in and see what it sounds like. Maybe I should get all these kittens off the bench. There you go. A new kind of neck support for your guitar. The kitten neck support. Available now at your local pet adoption shelter. Okay, it's plugged in. And uh, apparently... This is just a battery check and nothing else. So I guess it's got an on off switch built into the jack over here. It doesn't have the acoustic electric type jack down there. It has, uh, it's over here. And I guess that turns this on and off. Otherwise I would imagine your battery would drain. So, and then this is just volume with no, uh, no like off click position. As you can see, it does feedback. So, uh, so yeah, so it's uh, up and running here. Yeah, so, there's the amp. 
There's guitar. Find a pick. Add a pick. Yesterday. Last night. Oh well. No pick. Wait for Oh wait, there's a pick. Pull on the floor. Make a little noise for you right quick. Everything's set flat pretty much. Tones all the way up on the amp. EQ set flat. Got a real nice open sound to it. gives you a general idea. Okay, um, yeah. Let's see, so, now, what would I change? What would I do different? What would I improve? Um, 
Let's see. You could go locking tuners for ease of tuning. Yeah, locking tuners for ease of tuning. You could go lightweight tuners, but the resonator already makes the bottom end of the guitar so heavy that neck dive and a heavy neck in general or, you know, um, high rotational inertia, the guitar being difficult to spin around, is not an issue because this is so light versus this being so heavy. So, lightweight tuners not really called for, locking tuners if you want, they'd add a little weight, but it still would be probably pretty, relatively insignificant compared to the weight of this puppy down here. So, yeah, this thing definitely adds a couple pounds to this guitar. I mean, it's like, you look at it and you expect when you pick it up that it's going to weigh like an acoustic. And no, it weighs like a Les Paul. <laughs> it, maybe not quite as much as a Les Paul, but yeah, by comparison, this thing is heavy, you know, it weighs every bit as much as a, as a solid body guitar and not an acoustic guitar, so, then, uh, this is nuts fine, you know, there's, I mean, maybe if you're doing massive bends and stuff, you might want to put on a locking nut for tuning stability, but there's all the other tricks you can do. But, yeah, you could put a locking nut on it for increased tuning stability. That takes everything above the nut out of the picture. Um, me, personally, these strings are a little heavy gauge for my tastes. And I also think the action is a bit high, but... Uh, I'd have to look up how you adjust the action on this guitar. As I recall, there's supposed to be something that allows you to raise and lower the biscuit or something like that. I don't know. But, yeah, I'd have to check into that. So, um, because, yeah, the action is, the action is high, definitely. I mean, even for, uh, see, this is a Gibson, and it feels tight. And that's because the action's high, not because it's tight. It feels tight because you, you, you got to press so far. You got to press two to three times as far as you really ought to have to, even on an acoustic. So, yeah. Action's high. Um, other than that, um, you know, I might put a neck pickup in it, something like that, but, but, you know, this stuff works good enough. And acoustically, it, without the electronics on, it's just fine, so. Really, the biggest thing I think would be, number one, a set of lighter strings, but that's just personal taste. And uh, and then maybe if you could do something about the action. And I'd have to look up how to do that. So, But anyway, I think that's going to do it for this review. Um, like I said, they, uh, they were... Like, you know, 100 and I think I paid 178 and change, like last week, or maybe two weeks ago now, for this thing. It came a few days ago, so. So, yeah, it might have been a week and a half now. Um, but, yeah, I paid like 198 change, free shipping, with uh, Amazon Prime. And, obviously, that price doesn't include uh, tax, but, um, but, yeah, so... For under 200, this thing showed up in my driveway, and it's it's not bad. I'm not displeased. You know, I can I can deal with this, and even if I can't, just getting some lighter strings on this thing will go a long way towards the towards the fact that the action's hot. So it'll make it a whole lot more playable. Probably, uh, actually, changing the strings would go more towards making this thing much play much more playable than uh, lowering the action would. So, there you go. Until the next one. Yeah, what is next? Flying V, I don't think we're going to document it. I mean, it's like, it's a regular build, more or less. I'll just like, you know, maybe if I, maybe if I do special things or interesting things, I might document something like that, but I'll just like document the build at the end, and then I'll uh, and then I'm all caught up and I can finally do my triple tube carbon fiber neck build. So, yeah, that'll be cool. 
So until the next one, everybody, have a good one.